Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Um, today I had the camera out. Um, I finished up, I think, like 19 knives yesterday or so, so I had the camera out snapping pictures of them to get them up on the website. Um, and I figured I'd go ahead and do a video on something that's not knife related, but this is my grandfather's old uh, cat trap. Um, one of the videos that I shot on... Um, I think it was on one of the air rifles or something there was a comment in there that got me thinking you know I've never showed you guys this and um, if what I see down at the animal shelter is any indication um, you know that this could be fairly useful um, you know stray and feral cats in the city are you know usually kind of a problem um, you know I, like I know I have a, a really nice uh, evergreen tree in my front yard and along about this time of the year, during the spring, um, you know, the, the birds are hatching eggs and everything, and usually I find dead baby birds all over my yard. Um, and then, you know, gardening season, uh, for some reason, stray cats just absolutely love to crap in my wife's garden. And of course, she hates it, and then she tells me about it, so, you know, I feel like I need to do something. Well, the local animal shelter, they have, like, I don't know, I think the last time I talked to them, they said they had like a dozen um, traps that you could borrow from them, um, you know, and empty, and then you take them home, bait them, catch whatever it is you're going to catch, and then return the trap with whatever animal it is to them, and then they'll take care of it. But those traps are always out, um, so there must be a really high demand for, for these box traps. Now you can buy the have a heart traps um, in this sec this size or so, um, all made out of steel. Uh, fairly nice traps, um, but I want to say they're like sixty or seventy bucks. And you know, with traps, more traps are more better. So if you've got one animal you want to catch, if you set three traps, then you'll you know there's three times more likelihood that you'll catch it. So anyway, this is my grandfather's old cat trap. Um, he actually built it to catch squirrels. Um, but he ended up catching more cats than squirrels, so it, he just started catching cats with it. Because he had a, a huge garden, and they were constantly in there digging. Anyway, so this, this trap is made out of scrap. Okay, so uh, I'll give you some kind of rough dimensions on it. Um, but pretty much just build it out of whatever scrap that you have laying around. So this one is 28 inches long, 13 and a half inches tall, 12 inches wide. Uh, the opening on the end here is 8 and 3 quarter by, I've got it set, so let's see if, 8 and 3 quarter wide by 10 inches tall. And this one is made out of uh, 2 by 2s and some 1 by 2s, uh, chicken wire. Um, when I got the trap, about, oh, He's been gone for, I want to say I was 20 or so when he passed away. So I've had this trap for almost 20 years. Um, you know, and, it, and I've replaced different components on it as they either wore out or um, got broken. But, you know, the, the, the frame, um, the treadle, uh, the uprights for the door, and the the back door are all original along with the hinges and the, the straps up there. I've added a couple of things to it since but grab whatever scrap you have, build a box, something like this. Um, this one's got a solid floor. Solid floor, floor right there out of uh, probably just quarter inch plywood. The treadle's made out of quarter inch plywood and it is 11, 11 by 10, quarter inch plywood with, uh, I've got a staple on this side and a little uh, eye screw on the other side to hold the string for the trigger mechanism. The back door is just made out of quarter inch plywood. It's got hinges on the back, and I'll show you that in a second, and then straps to hold it closed on the top. And this one is just, I mean, it's just stapled, you know, I mean, it's not very elaborate at all, you know. He just ran the, the chicken wire up and then stapled it 
down to make sides. Um, I did add a quarter inch um, top plate. Um, protects your hands from uh, if you get a real wild cat in there. Sometimes they'll try to you know try to get you when you grab the handles. A couple of pieces of rope for uh, you know for a handle to transport the thing. Uh, nail. Anyway, so let's let's show you how it works first. And like I said, I've had this trap for about 20 years now. <clears throat> and I don't know how many cats I've ever caught with it. I never kept track. And I don't know when he built it. I wasn't there when he built the thing. But um, the wood looked pretty weathered when I got it. So, you know, he might have had it 10, 15 years before I got the thing. Anyway, so the basic premise here is that this is a live trap. Okay, this trap is not designed to kill, hurt, or anything like that. All it's meant to do is to catch and contain whatever it is you're trapping. And in this case, most of the time I use it for, for stray and feral cats. Anyway, so you have the treadle right here. Uh, this big old nice wide treadle. And it's got uh, string attached to the, the corners of the treadle. So right now the trap is set. And that string comes up over this half inch um, copper tubing and then comes over here there's a nail uh, that I heated up and bent into a bent a hook into one end of it to hold the string and that nail slides through a hole in the plexiglass yep a hole in the plexiglass right here and so you usually put bait in the back. I usually use just a can of the cheapest cat food that they have at Walmart. So then as the cat walks in, the second it puts any kind of weight on the treadle, that treadle goes down, pulls on the string, pulls the nail out of the, the door, and the door falls. Um, the weight of the door is usually enough to, to keep the door closed um, so that nothing gets out. Um, I did put... Uh, a loop of paracord, just a hole drilled in here, and then there's a, a screw right here into the frame. So once you go to transport whatever it is you're taking down to the shelter, you just take that loop, put it around the screw, and now the door won't open. So if the trap tips over in the bed of your truck on the way to the shelter, then you know the animal's still in the trap. Like I said, the, the plate right here is for those um, uh, very energetic catches, um, so that way you can grab a hold of your, your handles without uh, exposing your hand to the, to the box. The half inch copper tubing, it really, um, he just had the string would come up in between the, the chicken wire. And that worked pretty good. Um, but by adding this piece of copper tubing and that nice long round radius like that um, it really cuts down on the amount of force that you have to put on the treadle to get the to get the trap to go off and it also doesn't fray your your string as much and it's just held in place by a couple of screws I mean it just kind of flops on over the place once you have the animal in the trap um, when you take it to the shelter, or if you catch something that you weren't meaning to catch, and you need to turn it loose right there, you can either just lift up on the door and let whatever it is out, or he put in a, a door, and it's just got uh, steel hinges on the bottom and these leather straps on the top. You just pop those, and the door falls off, and you're catch can come out or at the shelter um, let them know about that and that way because uh, a lot of times they don't understand how it works so and I drop the the trap off at the front desk they take the whole trap with the cat back into the back and then they turn it loose so I'm not there when they're working the trap so that that makes it real easy for them to turn whatever it is loose um, let's see when you're making this, this door, this part right here is fairly important. You can see there's grooves cut in the uprights. And that's what that door slides on. So it's caught pretty good there. 
uh, the nail mechanism. Like sh you can see, there's uh, you probably can't see, but there's just an eighth inch hole drilled in the plexiglass right here, and that nail fits through there. See it sticking out? Now, generally, when you set this, I usually set it pretty dang close so it's so it's real sensitive now if you're out trapping and the wind is blowing real hard um, this trap doesn't care for wind because the wind will come up here and catch that and and trip your trap before you make a catch so with this style of trap you have to be um, pretty careful on your placement put it in a, a fairly sheltered spot if the wind is blowing or if the wind is blowing that bad and it's you know because usually when the winds blowing it's fairly cold um, just wait for a nicer day to set your trap up um, like I said okay <clears throat> so here's some of my rules when I'm trapping um, stray or feral cats generally speaking unless the cat is given you know an awful lot of uh, you know trouble like let's say uh, he's at a friend's house and that friend's got a mobile home and the uh, and cats love mobile homes for some reason and there's some cats that are getting in through the skirting and getting up into the underbelly and then you know destroying his insulation now in that case you know hey game on that cat's doing damage do whatever you can to trap the cat and then get it down to the shelter if it's just a situation like here at my place where you know, it's springtime, the, uh, the cats are chewing up all the wild birds and crapping in the garden, then generally speaking, that's not a real big hurry. So, um, so if I can avoid trapping in cold, nasty weather, I do. Because when that cat gets in this trap, you know, see the sides are all open. So it's, uh, that cat's stuck in the open, you know, with no shelter or anything. So just because you're trapping something doesn't mean you can't trap with compassion for you know the animal it is that you're trapping okay so I don't really like to trap in cold weather um, just because of that um, I generally speaking don't like to trap on the weekends because the shelter is closed um, my one of my big things when I'm trapping like this is let's say I catch a cat I want that cat to spend as little time in this trap as possible because it's, well, it's going to be in distress. I mean, it's not used to being in a box like this and it's exposed to the elements. So, um, so I generally only trap Monday through Friday or maybe not even Friday, maybe Sunday through Thursday. That way the shelter is going to be open and I can take the cat down to the shelter the next day. So no cold weather trapping. Um, I only trap when I can take the box to the shelter they're open um, generally speaking I like to check my traps at least a couple of times a day um, you know that way the animals not sitting in there for too long if you do happen to catch one and the shelters closed or the weather's really nasty and you can't get there generally speaking I take them and bring them into the shop or stick them in a shed or you know the whole trap and everything just to get them out of the weather um, Sometimes you can get, um, if the, the can is open and still, you know, upright, a lot of times you can get some water in there, keep them a little bit more comfortable while they're waiting to take the trip down to the shelter. Um, but, you know, anyways, I mean, if, if you do build a trap like this and, you know, because you have a, a cat problem or any other problem, you know, just try to trap with a little bit of compassion. I mean, um, they're kind of our responsibility, you know. Anyways, but... So these traps, honestly, you know, depends on your scrap pile, how much, um, you know, how much they'll cost. Um, I did build about a dozen of these a while back for um, uh, a park that was having a real big problem with uh, stray and feral cats. I mean, they had hundreds of them. And so, uh, so I went and way more than just one trap would do. So I built like a dozen of the things, but honestly, it... You know, I think it came out to maybe six or seven bucks per trap. So way cheaper than the Hava Hearts. The trigger mechanism, I think, is a little bit more sensitive than the Hava Hearts, but the Hava Hearts are better um, 
wind resistance on the trap also. And most shelter people know how to work them. Um, you know, I think that's I think that's about it. About the only problem with this particular trap, besides the it being sensitive to wind, is the trigger mechanism. Um, the string, you know, so you got you have two. I use kite string usually. Um, so you have two strings that attach the treadle that come up to pull the nail out. Sometimes you'll get a cat that's extremely upset to be inside this trap and they will go ballistic. I mean, they'll be, you know, running all over in here. You can see this one has got bite and claw marks. I even had one one time actually chewed his way through the chicken wire. Now, I don't know... Honestly, I mean, I was there, I saw it, and I still don't believe it, but somehow, I mean, he didn't pull the staples loose. He actually went through the chicken wire. But anyway, when you get a crazy one like that, sometimes they'll get, uh, get themselves caught up in this string and get um, wrapped up in it. If you see that happen, do not reach in there and try to, try to get that string off that cat, okay? I did that once, put on a real heavy welding, uh, leather welding glove, and it was a, a smaller cat, you know, like a juvenile. Reached in there to grab a hold of the cat to be able to get the string across, off of him. And that cat bit down through, through the leather welding glove. And his tooth went through the top of my thumbnail. So, yeah, so if, you, if the cat gets tied up in that string, just grab a knife and cut the string where it comes out. And they'll work themselves loose from, from then on. But anyway, other than that, they've been a great trap for me. When you set them, um, like I said, I usually use uh, the cheapest cat food that Walmart has. Um, you could also use tuna fish or pretty much anything smelly, I think. Maybe last night's leftovers if, uh, if they weren't all that great. Um, I generally like to put this whole trap um, like next to a building. Okay, so you would have, say, a building right here lay it flush up against that building and then if there's you know plywood or anything kind of around that area you know bring it up and kind of um, brace it up against that side just in case you get one of those crazy ones because they can I've had them tip the the whole trap over I mean if they go ballistic in there but anyways um, yeah so if you uh, if you need a trap and a shelter has them but they're all lent out just grab some scrap from your uh, from your scrap pile throw one of these things together um, mess around with it a little bit like I said you know this trap had been working for years when I got it and then when I got it I added you know a couple of little improvements the um, the half inch copper pipe to make the string go a little bit better the top plate to protect your hand and then the um, uh, the closing mechanism that keeps the keeps the door closed when you're transporting them to the shelter. Um, yeah, so if you need a trap, this is a pretty good design. Like I said, it's worked good for me for the last 20 years or so, and it worked good for my grandfather for however long before before that that he built the thing. This trap might be 30, 40 years old or so and still still going pretty good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.